One thing I wanted to to ask you about because um, on Instagram your name is Purple Ella and Coco, mm-hmm. and before yeah. before we got here to to chat, I had a look at your YouTube channel and your video about autism assistance dogs. Would you like to tell everybody a little bit about what it is like to have a Coco in your life? Yeah, I mean, I can talk about dogs all day long. So happy to dive into that one. Yeah, so I've had Coco since she was a puppy and um, have owner trained her as my assistance dog with the support of an organisation that supports with things like um, trainers and insurance and stuff to help you do that with in a kind of supported way did that make any sense <laughs> um yeah so I would say working with Coco is has been life-changing for me in that I'm now able to like attend hospital appointments and go shopping and stuff on my own where previously I would have had to have made my husband take the day off work and come and mm-hmm. do it with me um but it, it but it isn't without its, its challenges so I always like to say that like on the one hand I've got this amazing support and relationship with this animal that I absolutely adore and who is the most uncomplicated relationship that I have in that I'm never worrying you know you're autistic I'm never worrying (laughs) does she like me did I say the wrong thing what does that facial expression mean you know she's just like solidly consistently the way she is and she doesn't answer back and she never disagrees with me which I love yeah yeah exactly but on the other hand especially if you're owner training an assistance dog and especially if you're quite a black and white thinker they're not perfect not even guide dogs for the blind are perfectly behaved all the time and I think I kind of thought they were before I became an assistance dog handler I kind of thought an assistance dog was just almost like a robot that never had a bad day right but they do they have bad days and sometimes the training doesn't work and that can be really frustrating and no matter how I'm feeling I've got to walk her and I've got Mm. to care for Mm. her you know which can be a good thing because it kind of keeps you motivated, but can also be a bit of a challenge. Um, but for me, I, I absolutely love working with Coco. And I'm also the ambassador, one of the ambassadors for Dogs for Autism, who are a charity in the UK who provide fully trained assistant d- dogs to autistic people of all ages, yeah. which is awesome because actually all the other charities are doing brilliant work, but no one's working with autistic adults mm. apart from these guys in the UK. Yeah, I, I kind of, I kind of really care about this. Yeah, project. I think the the looking after and the walking and the the feeding is because um, I I've you know thought about getting an an assistance dog because throughout my life I've had I mean my 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 big brother was a dog lovely lovely mongrel from the from the kennel called Bob <laughs> called him Bobby Dog great dog name and um, he uh, <laughs> I think he I think he lived up until he's about. 14 or 15 and um he was he was definitely like a massive emotional support for me i think the the issue the issue mm-hmm. for me comes in that i still haven't sorted out all the executive functioning issues that i have and you know even getting myself to eat and getting myself out to a walk would be difficult <laughs> one one thing that i that i sort of picked up when you were you were talking about um autism assistance dogs is that You've had a lot of difficulties with accessing venues, places that you know should should be accessible. And I think you said in the video that there's you know denying someone who has an assistance dog into it into a venue is you know against the law. It's it's a reasonable adjustment. Have you had have you had many experiences like that, or is it more of an isolated? Yeah. Thing? No, unfortunately, it does happen regularly. And I kind of thought it was maybe happening regularly to me because I work with a dog that doesn't look like an ad- most assistance dogs you see kind yeah, of black labs yeah. or golden retrievers, right? Whereas Coco is a small, fluffy dog. So I thought maybe it's that. Maybe people aren't used to seeing that. But I've been following um, YouTuber Molly Burke, who is um, blind, mm-hmm. and she works with a guide dog, and she has access problems. And I'm like, if someone with the most well-known, most obviously working dog is having problems with access. We all are, right? Yeah. Um, so what I've started to do is I have, I found it really stressful for the first year or so of working with Coco, having to explain every time, actually, we are covered by the equality law. Actually, you do have to let us in. And, you know, dealing with that was like almost more anxiety provoking than not having the dog in some instances. <laughs> yeah. I think there was one particular memorable instance when I wasn't allowed to do a COVID PCR test with her. 
they just wouldn't let me in and not only would they not let me in but they were quite aggressive in their manner with me so that was quite stressful oh. so after that particular incident with a big kind of beefy bouncer guy oh, not letting me God. in like <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Go on, it was go a lot. On. It was a lot. <laughs> After that, I realised that what I could do was, and this is kind of anyone that's got a dog assistance dog, you can do this. Is uh, I got from Etsy a card that has a QR code that I can literally just go, just scan this, and it takes them to a place where all the law around assistance dogs is explained. And since nice. I've been using that, it's gotten a lot easier because I'm just like, here's my card, just do. It. And half the time they don't even scan it; they're just like, all oh, right, okay then. But it saves, I think as an autistic person, anything that saves the need to do more communication than I <laughs> have to is a helpful thing. Yeah, especially with yeah. bouncers. I um, I have a particular aversion to uh, any security or security staff or bouncers because um, I'm very heavily PDA and I find it really difficult to... <laughs> there's been sometimes that sometimes when I've gone to like the pub with my friends or or something and if and it's uh I, I always find I always find myself getting very on edge and very annoyed when, <laughs> when I'm around the security stuff yeah well I'm not gonna say that I walked away shouting words that I wouldn't use in this podcast <laughs> at this guy in the end that might have been what happened <laughs> oh they're just so I could go I could go on about it forever but yeah he basically treated me like I was a precious Karen and I think that's I think as a as a white female presenting middle-aged person mm. the Karen kind of meme or however you would describe it has not been helpful for me because for example like a couple of days ago I was having to say to someone why don't you have a blue badge parking space a disabled parking space yeah. I needed one you don't have one you've got a 20 t- 20 car park cart Blah. You've got a 20 car, I can't say it, <laughs> 20 car car park. Yeah. You should have a, and the way they treated me was like I was being a Karen. And I wasn't saying, mate, my coffee isn't the right temperature. I was saying I have an access need that you're not meeting, but I feel like I get that vibe a lot. And this security guard was definitely mm. giving me that. I just think you're a precious, you know, Karen type. I can, I I can, I can imagine that you, you have to, you have to deal with those circumstances where, People don't let you in because of because of Coco a lot. So I imagine that it's quite it's like, oh, here we go again. Like, <laughs> honestly, I think the biggest problem is not so much that because at least in that situation, I know that the law is on my side. I've talked yeah. about it enough now to know that the law is on my side yeah. and that I can handle it. The biggest problem is people who want to pet her. Yes, I get so every single time I leave the house with my assistant's dog. 50% of the people we come across will want to pet her or interact with her. And that's really difficult because I've spent a long time training her to ignore people oh. when we're working. Yeah. So if they're trying to do that, that's a really mixed message for her. And so then I'm having to say to people, sometimes like really cute elderly people or people with children, <laughs> you know, so you feel awful, like actually, can you just ignore her? And I don't know how to say it in a way. And because I'm autistic, I don't know how I'm, I'm, I'm struggling <laughs> to say it in a way that doesn't sound mean. Yeah. And I find that that's probably the biggest problem more than the kind of access thing. So if anyone listening to this podcast takes anything away from what I'm saying, it's if you see a service dog or an assistance dog working, don't even look at them, just ignore them. I suppose there's a lot of unexpected and unwanted social interaction when you're just kind of wanting to go out for a day, but dog dogs are definitely a a magnet to a lot of people. (laughs) yeah Which, i mean it can be good i don't want to leave on an entirely negative it can be a positive it can mean that i have a nice little social interaction with someone with a very scripted easy you know yeah, topic yeah. but in general if you see me about with my dog if you could just ignore us that'd be brilliant <laughs> brilliant 